time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. 49ers roster countdown continues with number 21. A little bit of a surprise. No way in the world I thought he would be this high ending last season. Number 21. New starting center, Jake Brindle? <laughs> he says with a question mark. Look, there are a lot of reasons to believe Jake Brindle will be the guy uh, snapping the ball for Trey Lance in 2022. There's also some reasons not to. And if you had to ask me, the biggest question mark on the entire team, not just the offense, it's right here. If Jake Brindle can be the guy that the coaching staff thinks he can, then all right, the 49ers are going to be just fine. However, if you were to ask me a question, what made the 2022 season go wrong, I'm going to say inexperienced interior offensive linemen. That is where it could go wrong. Uh, a young quarterback, you know, starting for the first time, you know, he had 10 quarters, started two games in 2021, Trey Lance we're talking about here, but this could be an issue. However, let's dive into the past of Jake Brindle. Let's try to answer some questions, uh, get to know him a little better. And man, it, again, you know, the theme for this entire roster is intelligence. He's got it in spades. He wears jersey number 64. Um, he's 6'4", 299, which he bulked up considerably after the the combine, which he went undrafted in. He was way too small. Um, entering into his sixth season, he's 29 years old. So while he does not have a lot of playtime and game experience, he does have a lot of experience in the system. Um, now, he's from Dallas. Uh, he played at Plano East Senior High School in Plano, just north of Dallas. He was an economics major and got into UCLA and was on the honor roll at UCLA. Very intelligent guy. Now, his family... Growing up, they were really, really big in musical theater. Um, so musical theater, intelligence, and fishing. That's what this guy is. Like a very well-rounded individual for sure. Huge fishing fan, still considers it his favorite hobby today. Um, in high school, he played defensive tackle his first two years in high school, then moved to offensive line his junior year, was named team captain that year as well. And yeah, he was a stud. Two team, first district, uh, first team all district, offensive line junior and senior year. And again, Plano schools, they play some good football up there. Uh, he received the Coach K Award for academics and athletic balance at the team's banquet in 2011, two-time All-Pac-12 um, in 2014 and 15 for the Bruins, stepped in, played really, really well. Um, UCLA's athletic director on a roll nine times, nine times. This dude has got, I mean, economics on a roll, that's pretty incredible at UCLA. Now, couple other things that I thought were kind of interesting. Um, he's interested in career in law after football, so this is somebody, you know, football – He's made some money, I think just over, I think right at two and a half million dollars um, so far. He's on a league minimum deal this year, but he's going to take over. He wants to do law after football's over. He did opt out of the 2020 season for the 49ers, which is interesting. He's been with us for a minute, but again, like not a lot of playing time. Um, and Coach Forrester, who's probably the number two offensive coach behind Kyle Shanahan, I'd, I'd even put him ahead of Anthony Lynn. This is a Forrester guy. So if we look at the defensive side, like, okay, if you look at Chris Kuserik in the D-line, Kerry Hyder's his guy. He brings him with him everywhere he goes. He flourishes, right? The exact opposite, right? If you reciprocate that to the offensive line, Chris Forrester and Jake Brindle, same situation. Um, nothing but praise during the camp from almost everybody. Now, I want to see if this will work. This is uh, Trey Lance talking about Brindle and all the time they spent the previous year together. Yeah, Jake, Jake handles it, um, honestly, for the most part. That's kind of how our offense works. Um, you know, I have things that we can do um, from the quarterback standpoint, but for the most part, you know, the center's making the calls every play. So uh, past that, uh, I got to spend a lot of time with Jake. Obviously, I took, you know, all my reps pretty much with Jake, and, and Jimmy was with Alex last year. Um, and obviously, you know, sad. I wanted to play with Alex for sure, but super excited for Jake. I mean, Jake's, you know, three lockers down from me. Uh, we, we were together, you know, one of the first two in every morning, Jake is. Um, and I know he's one of the last guys to leave. Uh, so he works super hard, and his athletic ability is one thing I think that, that stands out about him. There's a lot to take away from that. Uh, again, he said, you know, Jimmy was with Alex Mack last year. I was with Jake every day. Lockers are close to each other. They're the first two in every day. So the familiarity aspect of Trey Lance and Jake Brendel 
simpatico, right? It probably has more experience with him than anybody on the roster. So you got these two new pieces that you are plugging in, and you're going to see how it goes. Uh, I don't think that this is, if Jake Brindle steps in and struggles, we'll go through those possibilities in a little bit later, what the answers could be. Um, not that I'm projecting that, but you do have to have a contingency plan, right? When you're building a roster, uh, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That's kind of the idea here. But the experience that Trey Lance has with Jake Brindle cannot be understated. It's gigantic. Now, what is Jake Brindle? Number one, if you just look at his play tape, which there isn't much of, athletic to a T. Might be the most athletic offensive lineman not named <laughs> Trent Williams. I mean, the dude is athletic. Listen to these measurements. Um, you know, 40-yard dash, he ran a 5.01. That's top 90% for centers. Bench press, 25 reps. That's pretty average. Three cone, 7.31 top 90% for centers, vertical, 28 inches, 20 yard shuttle, 427, top 97%. So you want quick lateral agility? This guy's got it in spades. Uh, 40, three cone, short shuttle, we're all in 90 percentile or better. And his athletic comp, just numbers on his testing and measurements, Jason Kelsey is the number one. He has an 86% match. He's the closest comparable. Now, I'm not saying he's Jason Kelsey. Obviously not. He hasn't played very much in six seasons. Next up, Nick Mangold at 70. Like, he is an athletic undersized center, which is paramount for the Kyle Shanahan scheme. So he fits that. Now, here's Trent Williams, the most athletic lineman probably in the NFL, talking about Brindle and what it takes to be on this offensive line. I mean, that's why he's here. That's why all of us are here. I mean, we, to be in this offense, you have to be an athletic offensive lineman. And I think you can look through that whole room, and Everybody's an athlete in their own way. And Jake is definitely an athlete, Jeff, definitely a quick twitch guy, definitely has short, short area quickness, which makes him a great center. Now, and here, here's where it gets, I don't know, you see me squint my eyes a little bit, try to focus. <laughs> like, it, it's just, okay, here's his journey. Okay, let's just be honest. Let's, let's just say what it is. Undrafted in 2016, so not seen as a starting level player, okay? Miami in 2016 played in one game. Miami 2017 played in 16 games, by far his most involvement um, season. Miami 2018, four games, he got three starts. Then went to Denver, nothing happened, they cut him. Went to the Ravens, nothing happened, they cut him. 2020 comes to the 49ers, opts out due to COVID. Last year, he played in you know a handful of games, but not very many snaps. Uh, and whenever I say not very many snaps, I mean like no snaps. Listen to these snap counts. He played six snaps with the 49ers last year. Uh, 176 snaps in 2018. That was the most of his career. 67 snaps in 2017. So you're talking about somebody hasn't even had 250 snaps. Now, in his career, that's over six years. And the most involvement he's had, you got to go back to 2018. That's a long time ago. That's a long time ago. Uh, so not saying he hasn't been working or he hasn't been improving. He just hasn't been playing in games. Um, now, we got to say this, okay, in the small sample size, that is 250 snaps. He's never allowed a sack. That's positive. He has allowed three pressures. All right, pressure to snap rate's not terrible. Um, but during camp, guess what? Yeah, he, he took all first team reps, all of them. It doesn't seem like there's much of a competition. They're going to let him run with it. And if it goes bad, what are some of those options? Okay, so let, let, let's jump into some of those now. Because... If what the 49ers want, what the coaching staff wants, is Jake Brindle take this and run with it. Start every single game, be solid, you know, just looking for average center play. Let's just be honest. Like, you're, you're not Pro Bowl level, that ain't happening. You're looking for average center play, which in our system, in the run game, you can make up for. I'm worried about the pass game. Kenny Anker, that's what I want to see. Well, we'll have to wait and see there. If he struggles early, I think they slide Brunskill from right guard to center. Then you put in a new guard, whether it's Jalen Moore, um, you know, one of the rookies, Spencer Verford, Nick Sakil, what it, like put Colton McKivitz, whatever, I don't care. That's if he struggles early. If he struggles late, the longer he is able to maintain that center position, that's going to open up the window for possibilities. Maybe one of the rookies stepping in at center. 
Burford, they said they, he's athletic enough to play center when they draft him. Nick Zakil, they say long-term center could be a possibility. Donovan West, one of the priority free agents, if he gets up to speed. Or even Don Terry Poe. Um, uh, not Don Terry Poe, sorry. Jason Poe, I apologize about that. Um, undrafted free agent, again, just freak that can kind of do everything. There's options, short-term, long-term, and... Also, some free agents out there. Let's just be really honest. J.C. Treader has been a very hot name this entire offseason. Um, that's a possibility. Matt Paredes, Nick Martin. There are zone scheme fit centers on the shelf. So if training camp isn't going the way you want it to, if preseason doesn't go the way you want it to, guess what? You pick up that phone, uh, you can fortify this. Because I think the long-term answer for center is in the building, right? Burford, Sakil, West Poe, one of those options, maybe Brunskill. None of those guys are ready. You want to keep Brunskill where he is, at least that seems to be the case. But man, like, th can they get ready in time? I would like nothing more than Jake Brindle to just take this starting job and run with it. Uh, he's 29. Is he the long-term answer? Probably not. He's on a vet minimum deal. He's on a one-year, $1 million deal. No guarantees. So, I don't know. Um, scares me him only starting three games. Scares me he's only had 250 snaps. Positives, he knows Trey Lance better than anybody in the NFL. That center to quarterback ratio uh, relationship, it's pretty damn important. Um, so we'll have to see here. This is one of the ones, this episode, I got him at number 21 for most important. Gosh, if he just is average, just average, then holy cow, 49 is going to be okay. But if you had to ask me, right, if you come back in the time machine and say, you know, the 2020 49ers had a losing season, why? I'm going to say this is the reason why. The personnel at the center position and interior offensive line, left guard, that's got to be in there as well. Aaron Banks, we'll talk about him later. But gosh, I hope Jake Brindle takes off. And again, if you could rub a magic lamp and give genie powers to anybody on the 49ers team, freaking Jake Brindle. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Josh and Anthony, executive producers of this show. And for the 49ers Rush Countdown, we're just going to keep counting them down. 20 more, 70 down, 20 more to go.